Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me in this video. I just wanted to quickly preface this by saying that I think it's extremely important for everyone with a car on the road to have a dash cam. I was recently in an incident where I was hit by another driver and I didn't have enough proof to be able to show insurance that I was not at fault and for that reason it was declared no party at fault and the insurance didn't have to pay out for either party since we both didn't have full coverage. And so I recommend that everyone have a dash cam to be able to prove that you were not at fault so that you can avoid a situation like the one I'm currently in where I'm taking the other driver to court because I was not able to prove directly to the insurance that I was not at fault. With that being said, go ahead and enjoy the video. Yeah. So right off the bat here folks, I just wanted to include a few clips that I caught on camera right after installing it between the filming of this video and uploading it. And in this incident, this guy couldn't keep his lane, was switching all around, maybe he was distracted, maybe he was drunk. And then in this next video, this Honda CRV to the left here in the intersection was coming into my lane, didn't seem to be able to follow into the lane during the intersection. And then in the following video, a similar incident, this guy was just kind of drifting into my lane. And these are all cases where I might've been sideswiped. And then this last video is an extreme case of someone doing a dangerous cut through, showing exactly why you should have a dash cam in your car. So right now I'm gonna be installing my VFO A119S dash cam on my 2007 BMW 328i. This procedure will work for almost any car. It's a matter of finding your fuse box and knowing which fuse to tap into for the hardwire kit. I will be including the hardwire installation, but first let's talk about how to mount your dash cam and where to do so. So this installation procedure is going to work for almost any dash cam out there, but the one I'm using is the A119 V3. Stay tuned for a review for that later on. All right, guys. So there are three main places that you're going to want to look into mounting your dash cam for minimizing the loss of visibility while also being able to still see that the camera is recording. One place that it's worthwhile checking is right here, behind the rear view mirror, so it's space that would otherwise be obstructed anyways, and it has pretty good visibility still, so you could look around pretty easily and be able to see whether or not the camera is recording. Another spot is directly behind the rear view mirror on the passenger side. This has similar benefits. It's a little more difficult to look around and see that the camera is recording, but it's still very possible. All right, guys, and then the third place that I would recommend mounting a dash cam is right here up in the corner by the A pillar there. I recommend there if you have a lot of sensors or anything that makes it difficult to put it behind your rear view mirror in a way that doesn't obstruct your vision a lot more. And the only issue with this mounting point is that it might be a little worse of a camera angle on the street, but generally I think it's still pretty good. And when you put a camera there, you're only losing a little bit of visibility in the corner that's already blocked by the A pillar anyways. All right guys, so this specific dash cam is going to be mounted using an adhesive plate that can be slid on and off the dash cam. And the purpose of this is to allow you to detach the dash cam without removing the mounting so that you can easily take this, plug it into your computer, take out footage if you choose to do it that way through the USB, or of course you can always take out the SD card and plug that into your computer as well. All right guys, so for the mounting of the dash cam, first I would recommend attaching the mounting plate to the dash cam as if it were going to be mounted on your car. Then plug your dash cam in so that you can see the footage being taken by it. And that's going to be useful because you're gonna to wanna to be able to see where exactly the dash cam is facing so that you know that you're getting a good camera angle wherever you're mounting it. Then you wanna mess around with the placement of the dash cam until you're satisfied with both the positioning of the dash cam as well as the angle of the camera. Now, I'm pretty happy with this spot. It's the second spot that I mentioned to you guys. But again, as long as you choose one of the three, I think you're going to be just fine. 
So a crucial next step is to clean your glass. And this is especially important for anyone using an adhesive solution like I am, since you're gonna want this to be a semi-permanent solution. So go ahead and take some interior intended glass cleaner and a microfiber and just wipe it down. All right, so now you're gonna wanna take off the adhesive cover and just position the dash cam as you had it before. Again, with the camera on so that you can see the footage being taken and you know you have a good angle when you mount the camera. Bring it over. Don't touch the glass to the adhesive until you know you're in a good camera position. And then you can go ahead and move it in gently. to mount it on the glass. And just like that, the dash cam itself has been mounted. So if you guys are just gonna use the, your car's AC adapter for powering your dash cam, all you need to do is take your cord from this point and tuck it into your paneling as best as possible. Now, generally speaking, for those of you who are wanting to hardwire your dash cam to your car's fuse box, it's a great solution for keeping open the AC adapters. So what you're gonna want to do is look up a fuse diagram for your car. In my car, the fuse diagram is non-existent. It actually tells you never to mess with the fuses. And so if this is the case for you, go ahead and just Google the fuse diagram for your car and you will be able to find one. So you're gonna wanna take the wire from your hardwire kit here and just feed it on through. I'm gonna feed it underneath here because my fuse box is in the passenger side glove compartment and now depending on where your fuse box is you're going to change where you're wiring this through but in this case i'm wiring mine right through the underside of the glove box here so that's a big part of the first step in this process Next, you're going to want to attach these wires to the fuse tap portion. And the fuse tap will vary in size based on your vehicle. For mine, this should be the fuse tap that will work for my BMW. Just going to want to join those there, like that. Just goes right around it, push it together and you'll just want to cover that with this protective sheath that comes around the fuse tap, and you're all set to go there. All right guys, so what you're gonna want to do next is take the appropriate fuse included in the hardware kit, make sure that the number is facing upward, and plug it into the portion of the plug that is furthest away from the plug inputs. And then just work it in there. There we go. All set with that fuse. So next what you're gonna want to do is get the ground wire all set. In this case, I'm gonna be grounding my circuit to this bolt right here. And no matter where you ground it, you gotta make sure that it's touching something metal, ideally a bolt or screw. You can thread that in yourself or use one, preferably, that's already there, which makes things a lot easier. And now what you're gonna to wanna to do is pull the fuse that you're gonna be using. In this case, my fuse for the AC adapter is this 20 volt fuse right here, F30. All right, so when you're taking out the fuse, you're definitely gonna wanna use a pair of tweezers like this and just grip the fuse that you wanna take out, pull it straight out. Now you're gonna wanna put that fuse that you just took out in the remaining open pins here on your fuse top hardware. 
Just slide it in there. The side, the side closest to the pins is what you're going to want to use for this. Okay, now it's in. Make sure it's in the same orientation as the other fuse, and you're all set to go. All right, so now that you've got your fuse top grounded, it's a matter of plugging it in to the right place in the right orientation, like so, and that ought to do it. All right, so now that we have it plugged in here, it's the moment of truth. We've got it plugged in and grounded. So I'm gonna put the key in here. Just press start, stop, so the accessories are on. And I see the red record light, which is a good sign. And there we go, the dash cam is alive. So, now it's a matter of tucking in this wire here using this pry tool provided in the hardwire kit. All right, so I eventually figured that out. I got the wire running all the way from the A-pillar through this Alcantara line here, down across the side here, into the glove box with almost no visible wires and a working dash cam that's pretty well tucked in there. So as I'm sure you guys noticed, I began filming in the daytime and ended at night. I had to stop and go to class and then come back to the job. So one thing, I would definitely advise is to be patient. Take your time with it, make sure you do everything right and so that you don't have to do it twice and don't break anything. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't yet already, please subscribe, give this video a like and a comment, and I'll see you in the next one.